Welcome to the BMF tutorial on Transcribe. Transcribe is one of the teaching tools we use uh, in both our private lessons and in our band program. Transcribe is the ultimate tool to use if you need to slow down a track, then speed it back up, you want to change the key, you want to even pull out some vocals, you want to bounce a, a loop, so just a section of the song. Um, it's the perfect playback tool to be able to do any of that. So the first thing we need to do to make Transcribe useful to us is we need to put a track in. I'm going to go ahead and do our demo today on the Adele song, Set Fire to the Rain. So I'm just going to simply drag the track over here. It doesn't matter if it's an MP3 or an AIF, and it'll load up instantly. And you'll notice up top here it says the name, Transcribe, Set Fire to the Rain. We're going to go ahead and poke around and just listen to how to play the track back. You'll notice this little red upside down pyramid here, this triangle. Uh, the track is going to play from wherever that triangle is. So if I press play now, it starts from the beginning. But if I click over here, you'll notice that the triangle moves there. And I can press play and play from there. A couple navigation tools you're going to need to know in order to make it easier to move around a song. Uh, are the first, this cursor right here, you slide it back and forth, you can move forward and backwards in the song. And the second really important tool is the zoom function here. If I want to zoom out and be able to see the entire track, I can do that. That makes it a lot easier for me to get a snapshot of the whole tune and move through it. <laughs> Finally, you'll also want to take a notice uh, of the volume knob here. Uh, it's a pretty hot signal coming from Transcribe, so you may find yourself wanting to turn it down a bit, or sometimes you need it even louder. This is where you take care of that. One of the reasons why Transcribe is such a powerful playback tool is that it's easy to mark the form and play just the sections of a song that you want to play. The first thing I'm going to do to mark the form is set my cursor where I want to begin, and in this case I'm going to begin at the beginning of the song. So I click at the beginning and I press play. <laughs> And then I'm going to press the key S. That's the hot key to set a marker. It says here, do you want to play it at the paused playback point or at the current point? The current point is the marker. That's what we want. Then you'll notice that it gives you the letter A up here. That means that's like a rehearsal marker on a chart. We're going to double click on that and we're going to just write intro because that's what it is. And then the next thing I'm going to do is simply press the space bar, which will take me from the current marker. And I'm going to listen to the entire song. And at each section, I'm going to press the key S and mark a new section. I won't actually go back to changing the names of the sections uh, until I'm done listening to the entire tune. So here we go. <laughs> Here's my first marker. I let it fall. See, it enters it. Yeah, I've completed all my markers, and more importantly, I've also labeled all the markers. You'll see in this case we have a verse, a pre chorus, and a chorus. And I go ahead and number the pre chorus or the verse that I'm on. So in this case, you can see pre chorus 1 plays here, pre chorus 2 plays there. It's really important to number the sections you're on because one of the powers of Transcribe is the ability to bounce between sections quickly and efficiently in a lesson so you can cover a lot of ground with your student rather than in something like iTunes where you're scrolling through and trying to find the section. So to that end, a keyboard shortcut that's going to be really important for you to have and use often is the shift bracket, which is going to move you through the markers. Take a look over here. You'll see that this marker is highlighted red. That means that's where it's going to play from. But if I move over here by shift bracketing to the next marker, or the following, or the following, it'll play from there. So this is an easy way to say move from the first pre-chorus to the second pre-chorus, or to the last chorus. Another important keyboard shortcut for you is going to be the Apple 
and the number 7. The apple and the number 7 are going to affect the tempo at which the track plays. Transcribe is incredibly powerful because it allows you to slow down the track without changing the pitch or speed it back up without changing the pitch. Take a look down here for a moment and bring your attention to this window. This means that you're playing the track at 100% the original tempo. But if I apple 7, it's going to slow it down by 3%. And if I want to speed it up, I'm going to hit apple 0. And that's going to bring it back up by 3%. So if I were, for example, to play the chorus, I find this a really useful tool to challenge your student while you're in the studio with him or her. Start it at 91% and do the three penny challenge each time bringing it up by 3% or down by 3% in tempo. Okay, the next great teaching tip for using Transcribe is to loop a section and have a student work on one section over and over. So I'm going to move my cursor over to the pre-chorus and work on the pre-chorus with the student. In order to loop this section, what I'm going to do is hold down the shift key, click there, and then simply drag while holding the shift key to the right, just like you were highlighting text in a document. And there I have my loop. Uh, it can help if I need to drag it further to the right. I simply hold the edge and hold, pull it out. No need to hold the shift key anymore. If I, or I can go to this side and pull it out or pull it in. And that will loop a section. Another great way to use transcribe while teaching is to use the transpose function. Here I'm going to transpose the pre-chorus down a half step and then back up a half step. It's a great way to challenge your students. If they are already familiar with the section and they feel really comfortable, challenge them to be able to play it down a half step or up a half step or up a fourth or down a fifth, whatever seems to be the right challenge for the student. In order to transpose, quite straightforward, here's your slider down here. Here's the original key. I slide it to the left, down a half step. I slide it to the right, whoops. That's a whole step. Well, let's hear a whole step. So that's a great way to use transcribe as well. A teaching tip with transcribe is how to get your students support materials in their Dropbox that they can use at home. Okay, be very easy to export any clip that you're working on. Again, this clip can be slowed down. It can be transposed and it can even be repeated for them. You go under File, you just select Export Sound File, you decide how many repetitions, I'll often do them, you know, 10 repetitions of a section for a student to play along with. Uh, in this case we can only select between WAVE and AIFF, so you can leave that as is. I'm going to browse to the student's Dropbox folder so it goes directly where I want it. In this case I'm sending it to my student Lucy, so I find Lucy with a spotlight search, I go to Songs, Set Fire to the Rain, drop it in that folder, and she'll have it in her Dropbox when she gets home. I'll make a note on her lesson notes to say, play the pre-chorus ten times, check your Dropbox folder.